Y'all ready to hear from Josh and Cassidy and the family? Josh, come on up here. Appreciate you guys. Cassidy, come on up too. Just uh, just say an initial hello. And uh, so Barb and Bill are also here, the McBrides. And it's funny because we actually go way back with the McBride family when it's Concert Mom was putting on all the shows and then we reconnected. How, how many of you know Concert Mom and the Christian concerts from way back? Are you got more family back there? You know her. <laughs> That's so, but we missed the Fire Iron Frenzy show. Anyway, so then we got reconnected and th- I'm telling you, this family is amazing. To me, they're inspiring because they're a testimony of really laying everything down and joyfully doing what God has called you to do because it is not easy. Thailand is like 1% Christian and it's not like a party over there. I mean, I've been on, you know, shorter mission trips and just dealing with the roads and the infrastructure and the culture and all the different stuff is difficult enough, much less really actually trying to turn the nation toward Christ. And so continue to pray for them and, and, you know, sow into them and, and think about them, and it's a worthy thing to invest in, and so we appreciate and love you guys. Did you want to say something and then turn to Josh? Yeah. Josh, you want to start? Call, and I'll Call yeah. Up. Okay. Well, it is so great to be here with you guys this morning. I'm so happy to be here and um, so glad to see all of you, and I just wanted to say, like, we, we want to introduce you to our missions team, or just our kids. Stand up. So... This is, do you guys want to come up? This is Milena. She's 19. We're going to hear a little bit from her. And Maisie is 14 and Samuel is 17. And we homeschool. And they were in youth group here and kids ministry and stuff before we were sent out from this church three years ago. So we've been in Thailand since then. And before that, we were in Nepal for 10 years serving. And just as we're talking today, I just want to say you guys are also our mission team. So I want to introduce you to the rest of our mission team, this church, and our friends and our family that are here today. So thank you guys for being here, our family and the online people. And they are so much, um, we are, we're an onla- online part of the church now too, because we tune in way over there in Thailand at 11 p.m. And before we start drifting off, we're like, Monday. Monday will be church. So we tune in and we want to say hi and thank you to all of the online friends that we have. We have many supporters, many prayer partners online and in this church. So you guys are all our mission team too. So we just want to say thank you so much for staying connected and praying for us and um, sending and being generous toward us and everything to see the kingdom further in Thailand. So we're very thankful for that. I wanted to say that first. So Thank you. Is this on? Is this, is this on? I better hold that. I'm turning it off. Okay. I'll take that. I'll turn it off. We don't know how all this technology works. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'll call you back up in a few minutes okay, and you can share your part. Okay. We're going to have three of us share a little bit today. We're going to kind of tag team it just to share from our different perspectives. Is this okay where I've got it? Great. Um, Yes, I echo everything she said, and we're just so blessed to be here with you guys again this summer. We were here last summer for a little while, and it's fun to see all the uh, old faces, faces we recognize. You're young, (laughs) but also uh, it's always a blessing when we come back after being gone for a while and seeing new people here, and it's just encouraging to us because we love this body, and we love... um, Pastor Clint, Sarah, and um, we're so thankful to be able to see other people becoming a part of this body. So um, I, was, I was excited and encouraged by what Clint was sharing earlier and, um, and you know, just praying through uh, what, what we should share today. And we want to we inspire and we want to encourage people. But at the same time, you know, on, on the way here and last night as we were talking, we were just, I was encouraging us to think about you know, it's all about Jesus. It's all for his glory. That's why, that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why I said to Clint out in the, in the hallway, I know that's why he's doing what he's doing. It's for the glory of Jesus. Amen. It's for God's glory. It's all for him. It's through him, by him, from him, and to him. And we all experience that as we walk in complete dependence on him. 
Uh, we, there's no way any of us could, could walk with him or walk in his ways unless he was actually empowering us by the Holy Spirit. And so um, I thought, um, just as I was sitting over there during worship, I want to start us off with a, few, a couple of scriptures just to kind of set the stage for the big picture. And then we're going to share a little bit about what we're seeing God doing. Um, so I, don't I didn't give you guys these scriptures, but um, I'll just read them out or you guys can read along. Uh, so let's first, um, you guys remember, in Genesis, God created man. He saw it was good. Man was good. Amen. Satan came. Did God really say? Planted the doubts. That's what separated. That's what pulled man away. Did God really say? Is, that, is he really saying what you think he said? Is he really good? Does he really want your good? The doubt caused sin. The, that caused separation. And we've all experienced that, haven't we? And um, I love that we're having baptisms today because that's, that's a, a key moment in all of what we're talking about. Um, sin brought the separation. We've all walked in that. We've all experienced it, the devastation. Um, even still, we experience the devastation caused by sin, even just with what's happening around us. Um, and then let's jump to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government and of his peace, there will be no end. Amen. Of the increase of his rule and reign and of his peace, there will be, not be an end. Yeah. So from this time, the prophecy is that it will be increasing. on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness for this time and forevermore. And his zeal will accomplish it or perform it. Yeah. His zeal, his, his power, his desire, uh, his energy, his desire to make it happen will make it happen. We don't have to do it. We trust him and we say yes to him. Amen. That's, that's the prophecy of what Jesus was going to do to correct what happens um, with the doubt that caused sin. Then let's jump to Matthew 28, 18. Does anybody know the Great Commission? We call it the Great Commission. That's not written in the Bible, but we call it that because it was a pivotal moment in history. Matthew 28, 18. Does anyone want to quote it? And Jesus came. <laughs> yes, and Jesus came. I'll read it there so I say the same translation. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 19. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. That's so powerful. I'm with you always, even to the ends of the age. And at the beginning of this, in 18, it sa he says, all authority has been given to me. We see the connection with that Isaiah um, scripture, where the, the increase of his government, the increase of his peace, there'll be no end. And here he is saying, all authority has been given to me. Look what I did on the cross. I raised from the dead. Now, all authority is mine, I give it to you. You go, I'll be with you. It's not you doing it, it's me. I'm doing it through you. Let's go to the end of the story or to the end of what we have in our book. But we know that's really only the beginning. Um, we go from Isaiah 9-7 to Revelation 7-9. Revelation 7-9. After this, I looked. Now, this is the, the revelation of um, Jesus that John saw, um, this open vision that, that God gave him, the apostle John, the disciple John. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, every ethnic group, every language group, Amen. every tribal group, yep. which there are thousands and thousands, over 7,000 ethnic groups and tribal groups. Where was I? Every tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And this is what, Clint, we were talking about earlier. It's all for His glory. Yeah. And here we see this the sum of all these things that it's leading up to. Standing before the throne, before the throne of God, 
before the Lamb, Jesus. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God. Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels, just imagine this, picture this in your mind. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they all fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped him, saying, Amen. Amen. They're saying amen to what the multitudes of tribes were saying. They're in agreement, saying, yes, they got it. They're here. They get it. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then it continues for all eternity. For all eternity, that continues. And we all rejoice. We all live in the culmination of all things, how God designed us to be in perfect fellowship with him. Every, it says later on, every tear was wiped away. There's no more sorrow, no more darkness. Praise God. So let's just picture that. That's this, the stage is set from the creation to the prophecies to Jesus, all authority, totally paying off sin providing the way for all of us to become the righteousness of God in Christ. All we have to do is receive the gift. Nothing we can do to earn it. And ultimately, every, someone from every tribe, nation, ethnic group, and tongue standing around the throne with the angels together, worshiping the Lamb, worshiping God. It's a powerful picture to see the whole arc of all of that. And then it's all brought together in that, just how he designed it. And so then we all, in peace with each other, worship him and enjoy him for all eternity. So that excites me to realize there's a big picture to it. It's easy in the day-to-day to think, oh, man, the world's getting bad. The world's getting darker. It's pretty rough. Hope Jesus comes soon and rescues us. There's an element of truth to that. He is our rescuer. He is our deliverer. But in the reality, when you see what's happening, Jesus is actually looking at it as an advance and an increase. Yes. And he, from, from this time when he raised from the dead and told his small band of people that were left with him, all authority is mine, now you go, teach this to everyone. And if you look through and, and realize the, the massive change and impact that this small group of, of uneducated people had rippling through history to now, you can start to fathom that, wow, it, this is increasing. This is advancing. Because it went from that to what we have now where there's, there's believers and followers of Jesus all over the earth. Yeah. Um, there are still pockets where there are no believers, where there are people that have not heard even the name of Jesus, have never heard a clear explanation of the gospel. Um, that's what you find mostly, is some people may have heard of Jesus, but they've never heard of why does that matter? And that the good news is for all people, not just Christian Americans. Um, the good news is for all people uh, because it has to do with the whole story, right? It all makes sense when you see it fit together. This isn't a religion. This isn't uh, something for just a select group of people. This is for all people that God created and designed that we would all be together worshiping him. So let's let that encourage us as we continue and we'll... We want to share a few stories of what we're seeing happen in Thailand and, um, and even in Nepal. And um, just a little, little background. Cassidy kind of introed us a little bit. Um, but um, I was, I was um, 21 when the Lord really started to grab a hold of me and redirect where I was headed in life. I wanted to be in the music business. And then I was in a... Uh, a uh, small village in Nepal at 21, just a year older than my daughter, and talked to young people who had no idea who Jesus was, who had no idea who Yesu, Yesu was. And as a preacher's kid growing up in America, I was like, I don't even know what to say to them. How do you explain if they have no concept? And that's what the Lord used to grab my heart at 21 and say, no, I, I want my life to be devoted towards um, 
people that have never had a chance to hear the gospel or hear of Jesus, that they would be, have a chance to hear. And so, um, so that's uh, the long journey. Now I'm fo almost 46. That was 21. So um, that was in Nepal. And then we lived there for many years, and we still go there. And then uh, Milena just went there for five months and did a discipleship school there and outreaches and things. Um, now we've been in Thailand serving for three years. In between those countries, we were here. And we were just the, it was just the Lord that he connected us with Clint again. Cassidy, her family had known him. And uh, it's been such a blessing being a part of this body um, since um, 2018 or 2019. And, um, and the, the love you all have shown to us and encouragement you've shown to us, um, we really are thankful and appreciate that. So, Milena, would you come up? And um, Milena, we're so proud of her. And she's 19. And um, she grew up, uh, mostly, she grew up her young years in Nepal. I think they wanted the teens to come as well. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so um, she just was there. She's pursuing what does God have for her next in these years of her life. And uh, I wanted to give her a chance to share of her experience um, this past year kind of stepping out after she graduated from high school, stepping out and, and trusting him and, and seeing what he has next for her. And it's been a blessing to us as parents to be able to, to watch that and just how good God is to care for her and guide her. And um, we're very blessed that our three kids, are, their hearts are for Jesus. And hey, welcome, guys. And very blessed that our, our kids are walking with the Lord um, they all three got baptized in Clint's pool right before we moved yeah. <laughs> overseas. And, um, and we're also so thankful that we've gotten to do all these years of ministry and missions as a family. And it's not just like my thing and I have to drag people along, but really as a family, it's been God's gift. We've been able to do this together. So would you like to share a few things? Sure. And you can put up the first, few, uh, the first uh, photo. I awesome. Yeah. I don't even have to do an introduction anymore. You already, yeah. you already did there it you for go. me. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Milena. I'm 19. And I just got back from a discipleship training school, and I was in Nepal uh, for a couple months. And I got to go on outreach into the Himalayan mountains into the winter time, And it was really cold. Um, and I got to see some amazing things that God was doing there and um, uh, that the harvest was ready, but also that the seeds that we got to plant. Um, and it was really awesome to see just so many things um, going on at once. <laughs> um, I stayed in local churches in the villages there, and um, my team, we spoke messages in little houses, um, and uh, we got to do a couple different uh, youth services up there and got to pray for a lot of people and encourage the few believers that are already up there and to see them multiply. And um, we got to hold youth events inside and some outdoor events during Christmas time. That was really cool to see uh, a lot of joy going on there. And um, after church, we had times of ministry and times of prayer that people could come up and receive prayer for things. And um, one testimony from that time is that uh, after church, I was praying for a bunch of people. It was really crowded in there. Um, and one old man, he came up to me, and it was hard, but I got a little bit of translation. And he said that uh, he couldn't see out of his eyes very well, but he was totally blind in his left eye. And I uh, began to pray for him, and I prayed a couple times, I think. And by the end of it, he said that he could uh, fully see and that Jesus had healed him. So, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Um, but there was so many amazing things, and the Lord really demonstrated his love in action while we were there. And we got to see amazing miracles in the physical body, but also um, internally. And so that was, that was really cool. Um, and I got to see them have a lot of hope. And even in kids' ministry last week, I had the opportunity to uh, share a little bit about that and just see what they've been learning and stuff like that. And it's really cool um, that they're learning the things that Jesus has taught in the Bible, that miracles happen and that they still happen today. And it's, it's really great. Um, so, 
yeah, Jesus said that we would see the things that he had seen and also greater things. And it was, it was really cool. I got to see some of the miracles that, uh, that Jesus did while he was walking on earth in front of my eyes. And it was like really surreal and really amazing that people that had no hope and that they had hope in Jesus after that. Um, and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of us. And we get to uh, show that power, show that love to other people. Um, I was in all kinds of places and different villages and, and cities and things like that. And everywhere we went, we wanted to bring the presence of the Lord. And we did that in worship. And we, we prayed and we worshiped everywhere we went. Um, you can go to the next, and, next slide. Yeah. And so we did that uh, on these high hills where they have these, these temples and these flags that are dedicated to idols that can't see, that can't hear, but we know that the Lord can hear and they can hear us up in heaven. So <laughs> we were praising the Lord up there and um, yeah, it was awesome. And I got to lead worship in like three or four languages, you know, um, but in English and Nepali. And then we were also in Sri Lanka for some of the time, which is an island off of the coast of India and I got to learn some worship songs there and got to worship the Lord in another language. Um, and so in Sri Lanka, we got to do some youth events and things like that, and we got to see uh, a bunch of youth just on fire for the Lord and worship with their whole hearts and really learn about him on a deeper level, and we got to speak to them about that and share the gospel to them. Um, and a lot of the time I was really out of my comfort zone and leading worship, you know, in, in another language that I just learned like the day before. And, um, but it was really cool because that's where we grow and that's where we get to see like the end of our own strength and the end of ourselves. And that's where we let the Holy Spirit lead us. And that's where we see God's strength show the most. And that's, yeah. <laughs> And our motivation should be out of love and the same love that Jesus showed us, and we should demonstrate to others that. So, yeah. yeah. Well done. Sure. Thank you, Melina. Um, yeah, that's obviously a blessing as a dad. See your daughter start to grow and learn and step out in those areas. And it's also is especially a blessing to me because of all the years that we've spent ministering in Nepal and, and just uh, really having a love for that place and seeing her be able to step into some of the things that she was just a kid when we were doing a lot of. And um, now that she's a young adult, uh, to see her walk in the same type of things, it's been a big blessing. Um, and so... We praise God for that. Cassie, do you want to come up and share a little bit? Cassie's going to share a little bit about some of the things in Thailand. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah. And she was doing that stuff from when she was a little kid, too, because yeah. we always, um, you know, treated our kids, like, with that same value. They have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. They're the same, uh, you know, they're vessels of Jesus, too. They believe in Jesus. They trust him. That's all it takes, just believing. And then you'll see it, right? And so, mm -hmm. and then receiving. And and um, so, yeah, the kids are a real passion of my heart and our heart. And that's uh, a big uh, way we've gotten to move into things in Thailand. It's a big unreached uh, generation there, um, the young people. Um, it's uh, quite can over. Just, can I give the overview of yeah, Thailand real quick? Yeah. Thailand is, is um, 70 million people as a population. It's a pretty big country for Southeast Asia. And um, it's um, almost 90% Buddhist. And uh, Christian population, evangelical Christian population is about 1% estimated right now. And, but there have been um, mission workers there since um, over 200 years, or about 200 years. So it's very slow break-in of the gospel. And so um, the, the, um, the feeling there among believers is that, okay, any time now, it's got to be the time when we're going to start to see um, just a more of an increase and a multiplication of what's happening here. Because there are these little pockets of believers around, mm -hmm. but it's still... Um, even though it's even an open country to the gospel, you can openly be a believer there. Um, it's still 1% of 70 million people are believers. And the churches are, you know, most of the churches are 30 people around that, 
they're all very small. Um, and um, once you become a believer in Christ there, a lot of times you have rejection from your family because there's the expectation that you're going to do all of these different rituals and things with your family as a Buddhist. And so that's the, where the persecution comes there is through your family. So as, the older you get, the more challenged people feel that, oh, I can't leave this. It's part of my culture to be a Buddhist because we have all these rituals and th different things we have to do. But at the same time, you see them living under the weight of fear-based religion, where if I don't do enough to outweigh my bad karma with my good karma, my good merit I'm trying to make, then I'll come back as something worse. And I'll keep doing this cycle until, you know, hopefully one day I can become nothing. That's the ultimate hope of Buddhism. And so, you know, the, it's kind of, it's amazing to see that. And it makes you even more thankful for what we have as knowing that we know our Creator. Mm -hmm. And He loves us. Mm -hmm. There is no other belief system or religion in the earth mm -hmm. that has a loving God, loving Creator, an expression of love from God. Mm -hmm. It's not there. And so that um, sets, sets God, the Creator God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, sets them apart, sets Him apart um, in the earth. And so that's kind of the the quick reality of Thailand's situation right now. And then, um, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but that's just okay. kind of... Yeah, and that's our out. only strategy, you know, is to just be surrendered vessels to Jesus, just receive his love, and then let that overflow out of our life. And whoever we meet and whatever we're doing each day, I mean, just like you guys, it's like we're, you know, just experience his love and then give that away. And so, and it never runs out, and it always is continuing and increasing. So... As we've had the opportunity, the kids there are just so hungry for love. You know, there's definitely a deficit, and it's it's very evident. And so we've been able to, um, with the foundation that we're with now, we they have had these um, agreements to have us in to teach English. And so I never thought, oh, I'm going to go overseas to be an English teacher. But this is what has kind of been a very big chance for us. And these kids are hungry. And so we're able to openly share Jesus with them and through stories and songs and just loving on them and talking to them, asking questions, having them respond back. You really get to know what they're what is going on in their heart, and we're able to bring kingdom perspective and and just the loving God into their lives. And so, you know, as much as it's a lot of seed planting and then watering those seeds. So, um, you know, this was, uh, the other one was the, the schools, you know, we have the opportunity with kindergartners and sixth graders and um, high schoolers now and college students. So it's all every day of the week, there's another group that it, it's just an open way for us to be able to share about Jesus and be that example and love them. So. And then this one is right in our town, and it's this uh, is a government school, a public school nestled right in this very um, old, ancient Buddhist temple, and um, it's where a lot of people come and pilgrimage and all these things, and there's a lot of strongholds there and a lot of um, demonic stuff, and this school is right in the property of it. And uh, we were invited to come here and teach English at this school. And uh, so it was awesome. We teach the sixth grade English. And then they said, well, the whole school has never had Christmas before. They've never experienced that. And so they invited the whole school. And all the teachers were very excited. And um, and so we taught our kids, um, our class, Joy to the World. So they all came up and sang that in English. And, um, and then we were able to give a gift to each one of the kids. And they shared the whole gospel with them. And then they had the kids responding and said, who remembers, you know, this about Jesus? like who was the character and they would run up and give them prizes and stuff and so we partnered with the local Thai church in our neighborhood and uh, that we go to and serve at and they um, we all kind of work together and and every one of these kids responded a yes to Jesus it was awesome like this was the first time they heard it and we're just invited you know and so that's a big deal is just like you know telling the good news and inviting people to the feast right of, of his love and who wouldn't you know agree to that and so um, and then with the little kids you know just the songs you know about you know the light and the darkness and Jesus is the light and they're all saying Jesus and they're all sitting there singing Jesus loves me and that that's that's going to stick with them and we believe it and we pray over them and and um and so we believe that you know and 
recognizing these kids that God's raising, going to raise them up to be future leaders and pastors and teachers and lead their families to Christ in that nation. And mm. so we're calling it out and we're prophesying, we're praying that, and we believe he's going to do it. So that, mm. that we're thankful for the next generation. We're thankful for all of the ways that we just respond to Jesus and kind of just say yes, even though it sounds like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work and some early mornings and a hundred kindergartners in one day. Are you kidding me? And then we just do it over and over. And so we just are thankful for the opportunity. And, um, and yeah, so I think that's about it on that. Mm. That's great. Cassidy is so great with those kids. It's really a huge gifting she has is with uh, young kids and she's able just to kind of bring them in and get them get them uh, excited about whatever she's talking to them about and um, really make them feel loved and seen and and included and um, so I, I wasn't with her for the first couple of months she was doing that with the kindergartners especially you know, these adorable little kids in their little uniforms and um, so then I go to help her um, and start helping her at that and um, I'm just amazed because they all already have memorized, you know, jump into the light and Jesus loves me and all these little songs that she's taught them. They already know it all. And so they're singing about Jesus and he is the light right in front of their Buddhist teacher. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, I mean, you kind of think, oh, kindergarten class. Yeah. But it's amazing putting those seeds in their hearts. I mean, it's, it's amazing, actually. And I was almost like, can we be doing this? <laughs> but it's just, they're just soaking it up. And like she said, the, 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 uh, the key is love. The key is love. And as you, as you experience God's love and let it overflow and show them love, then it's just, oh, the heart just opens. Um, and so it's fun to see that with those small kids. And then we've got sixth graders, high schoolers, and we're doing this a couple times a week. And then we do other ministry things besides that. Um, outside of the schools, um, that allows us to stay in the country. So also a good opening into people's lives. And then this one, um, another place that I was invited to come and teach English, conversational English. Um, we put this in some updates, but it was really cool because this is a government-run Buddhist university. And it, originally it was all just for monks, Buddhist monks. And then um, maybe 10 years ago, they opened it up for half just normal students and ha half monks. So um, we had um, times where we go in and teach here, and um, you know I was told, well, it is a specifically Buddhist university. They're teaching the monks how to be monks, so you can't really be completely open and sharing the gospel with them, um, but you can share about what you believe and all that. So um, as I was praying about that, I thought, okay, um, I feel like the Lord gave me the idea to um, just talk, have these questions where you ask deeper things of life to get to know people. And that's a good way to um, make friends in English. And so we, that's what we're doing in these pictures and asking questions of each other, like um, what's, um, what's one of the most important things in your life? Who do you respect most in your life? Um, what's one of your greatest memories from childhood? And questions to kind of get more into the heart of people instead of what's your favorite food and the normal things. And uh, amazingly, these guys were so open. Um, some of them sharing about you know, when they were in an accident, were in a coma for a couple of months, and their family cared for them, or um, um, times when they were sick, or um, things that they love, or dreams that they have. And it was really amazing to, to be able to experience. Um, but also, we had in this class one girl who was a Christian. And so when she was able to share about the most important person in her life, she said, well, Jesus is most important in my life, because he saved me and changed my life. And so she had the opportunity to share her testimony in front of all her classmates. And then each question I also was asked so then I could share. And that was kind of my trick. When you ask me, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, so I was able to share, basically share about the loving creator God who loved me, saved me, and gave me peace, removed fear from my life, um, saved me out of uh, loneliness. And, um, and you know, just to see them sitting there just like just staring at me, listening. And that most of them have probably never heard of a loving God. Right. And um, all of them are in a cycle of, well, I have to do this, 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 this. And monks have all of these extra things um, that they have to follow to be good monks. Like, a huge amount of rules. It makes the Old Testament look like a, a, kid's, a kid's storybook. 
<laughs> but the rules in, involved. And, uh, but it's all to make merit to have a better um, reincarnation. Anyway, and then so after um, a class one of the weeks, a young guy, he um, afterwards was talking to me and asking me some questions and said, are you a preacher? Uh, you don't really never know how to ask, how to answer that. So I'm like, I'm not, what's he getting at? I said, well, I'm not a preacher, but I'm, I believe in Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus. And I, I, sometimes I teach about him and I get together at church with other believers. We talk about him and we pray and worship together. And he said, oh, okay. And he said, well, I, I'm asking you because I've been thinking about becoming a Christian. And I said, oh, okay. And I said, well, why? What? Tell me more. He said, well, um, from what I've studied, Christians can be forgiven of sins. And in Buddhism, there's no forgiveness of sins. And so he said, it's a, it's a big weakness we have. He's a very intelligent and thoughtful guy, how he talks and things. And he said, so there's no way we can ever be forgiven. And he said, I even have my, my grandmother is 80 something years old. And she's still doing all of these things at the temple to try to make merit. And she's worried about when she dies, what's going to happen because she doesn't know if she's done enough. And he said, I'm, I'm 20 and I don't know if I want to live my life like that. I'm like, wow, I love how you're thinking. <laughs> and so I encouraged him in that thought process and, and then um, asked him, well, have you ever um, understood clearly what, it, what to do to become a Christian? And he said, um, well, he said a few things. And so then I just explained to him very simply and um, you know, encouraged him that at any time, it's a free gift. You can receive God's forgiveness. And just kind of picking up that there's something weighing on him that he knows there's nothing he can do to be forgiven, you know? And, um, and so in that classroom, he didn't give his life to Jesus, but then we've, we've been able to meet up two more times uh, since that class, outside of class, and talk more about it, and uh, just kind of connect relationally and try to just show him that there's, <laughs> you know, that God cares about him and there's hope. And um, for him, he's a 20-year-old guy who lives in his house with his Buddhist family. And there's that, that pressure that if he becomes a Christian, he's counting the cost right now. You know, One cost, I'll never be forgiven of my sins. The second cost, my family could kick me out. And so you know, he's in that moment of weighing it out. And we see that many times in other cultures. And um, some of you who I know have, have worked in other cultures where there's a huge cost with your family if you accept Jesus. And so there's, sometimes it's a quick decision. Sometimes it takes time. You have, to, you have to weigh it out. Is it, am I willing to lose all of that? Is it worth it? Is he true? Is he real? And um, then, you see, see, um, then you see them have that revelation and encounter him and step into it. So we, you guys can continue to pray for us in that. Can you guys, can you skip to the next slides? I think I'm going to jump ahead here. But um, my wife is saying, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> She's always my timekeeper. Come on, come on. But... Uh, so yeah, please pray for um, those kind of young people that we're planting these seeds with and sharing with. And, you know, like this guy, he's like on the brink of just like stepping into all he was created for. And our, our hope is not to like separate him out from his family, but actually to, for him to be the open door to his family, all accepting Jesus. So you can remember to pray for him. His name is actually Mammoth, like Wooly Mammoth. Thai people have funny nicknames. And so you can pray for Mammoth and his family that they'll fully open their lives to Jesus. Um, and so, um, so those are some of the cool things that happen even in just a normal like English class. And we, you know, that's not anything we did in Nepal. It was a very different style there, but in Thailand it's open, so there's different avenues to get into people's lives. And also, people are a lot more reserved in Thailand, so you really have to get out into their world and look for ways to, to have opportunities to share with them and build a connection with them so they can trust you, so they want to talk to you. Um, and so a lot of what we're doing, um, partnering outside of that, partnering with local churches where we're at, we're in a small town, and um, there's uh, a few churches in the town, very small churches, and, but majority Buddhist in that town is very strong, actually. It's a historical place uh, for Buddhism in Thailand. So people come there on pilgrimage to a couple of the temples there. There's supposed to be a, something relic from the Buddha, like a bone or hair or something from, from actual the Buddha inside the, the temple um, right near our house. And so people come from even other countries to visit there to make merit and like, ooh, if I go there, uh, you know, karma is, is outweighing. And so um, 
But with the church, we, we um, do outreaches like the, on the left there. We just go out um, sometimes after church on Sunday. We'll go out. There's a doctor's office nearby our church, and tons of people are sitting out there every Sunday waiting for their turn. And so we go and try to share with them. And several people have accepted Jesus out there and prayed. Um, lots of people accept prayer. A few say no, but a lot of people let us pray for them and just share the love of God with them. Um, and um, Sunday school, Cassidy has been heading up training Sunday school teachers and also teaching the kids. You can go ahead to the next stuff here. Um, and then outreaches we do. I think last year we shared about it too, but um, open places where people gather um, on the weekends, uh, street markets, walking streets, and things like that. Uh, we've been partnering with our church friends there just to go out and do music, worship, share the gospel openly. Um, and we're, we're trying to kind of inspire and encourage, like, let's, let's go a little bit more advanced towards people. And, um, and in that culture, there's a lot of distance, and it takes a while. We're saying, let's really try to get, get um, you know, our hands on people. <laughs> kind of, you know, we want to we wanna really see God impact their lives and ha them have an experience and encounter with Him. Sorry, I'm my back to most of you all day. But um, so we're, we're doing more things like um, inviting people if they need prayer up. And we even made a sign because we're like, well, maybe let's just make it clear. Here's a sign. Free prayer. Uh, if you have any sickness or disease, come have free prayer. Just try any way we can to try to figure out how to get people to draw in and connect. Um, and uh, lots of high school students hang out there. And a couple times we've been able to invite them up, guys play guitar, and have them come and play some music, and then we you know, encourage them and share with them. Um, just out doing things, like the guy on the top right, he's a recent guy I met just out at the running track, uh, just different ways trying to connect in the community. Um, I, night guard there I got to share the gospel with and give a Bible to, and he's barely open now. Um, and then this other guy, um, uh, he's an air-conditioned guy, had to the house and trying to share with him. And, and just, you know, anywhere in society we can get into and just get Jesus to people because most of them are not having any, any um, chance to hear uh, the gospel or that God is seeking them to save them. Um, and so we, we are wanting to do that, and we challenge ourselves to do it more and more. And part of our role uh, as, as um, people on the field, foreigners in that culture, is to also train and catalyze local believers to, to do the same thing. And so it's not just what we want to do, but we want to equip people that have a lot easier time than we do communicating and connecting with people. Like, okay, you, let's do this. Anything's possible. People are waiting. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Let's go. The Holy Spirit is in you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Jesus said, go, and nothing will harm you, and I'll work alongside you. Let's go. And so that's a lot of our role is just that. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, cheerleaders. And, and um, say, we'll go with you. We'll be fools. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, and then um, this, this story is, is great. Um, uh, uh, actually, can you go to the next slide after this? Then we'll jump back to this one. Um, you can go, I don't know if any of you know about the joshuaproject.net. It's a website. And it's a, it's a study of people groups and tribal groups, language groups all over the earth. And the point is, find out who doesn't have the gospel and let's get to them. And who has the gospel? Great. They still need dis discipling. They still need theological education, etc. cetera. Um, but who, who needs Jesus? Who has never had one chance to hear the gospel? Other people have had many chances. Let's, go, let's try to get everyone a chance to hear the gospel. So this is a broad overview. Red means unreached or least reached. That means in those areas, there's less than 2% Christians. And the, 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 the studies are that if it's 2% or less, there, it's almost impossible. Well, it, it's only possible by a miracle <laughs> for the local believers to reach their own people. Over in, in this generation. So they need help. They need help. They need encouragement. They need equipping. They need funding, whatever it might be. Um, and some of those regions, you see a lot in the Middle East, there's almost zero Christians. Would you point to where? Sure. So, um, so you see the United States here, South America, Africa, massive. India, billion people, over a billion people. China, billion and a half people or so. Eight billion people in the earth. Thailand is right here. Uh, we lived here in Nepal. Um, we're here in the green. So you see, praise God, established church like we have here. P 
People still need training, discipleship, evangelism, etc. But there is established church. We can reach our people, right? There's so many places here where there's not, there's not enough believers or strong believers that can reach all of their own people. So um, there, that's considered unreached. When you hear people talk about unreached. Um, and so, so in Thailand, so we go in and you, you zoom in. I should have a laser pointer here. You zoom in to the next, you click on your country, and it's really cool research. You guys can all check it out, joshuaproject.net. And you zoom in on Thailand, the next um, top right there, and you see all those red dots. All the red dots are ones that are in those unreached classifications. So that's tribal groups, language groups, or people groups that have less than 2% Christians, or even zero. And so as we were researching, before we moved to where we live now, we lived in another area. And as we were researching and considering and praying about moving to where we are, um, I was looking at this and I said, oh, there's a red dot right in that town. So I click on it, and that's the next one down there. And it's the Yong people, Y-O-N-G, Yong people of Thailand. 14,000 population, all in Thailand. They originally, 200 years, came from, 200 years ago, came from Burma. And um, they're 0.2%, not 2%, 0.2, almost zero Christians in 14,000 people. And so I'm, I was getting excited. Like, oh, wow, these people are right here. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's find where they're at. So then I did a bunch of research and found out, okay, which town did they settle in and all these kind of things. And um, um, found out that uh, there's one section of the area we live where most of them settled. Of course, now they've spread out over the years um, and uh, started asking around, who knows people? I went to one of the areas where a temple where a lot of them go and asked, and, are you from the young people? They're like, yeah, why, why are you asking me? Like, they're kind of scared. I'm like, I had a different tactic maybe. And, um, and so, um, you know, you learn, you make mistakes, you learn. And then, um, uh, so I was talking to our pastor. And I said, there's this people group. I don't know if you know about people groups, nations, a Thai pastor. He's like, no, I don't know about that. And um, I said, well, there's these young people that's completely unreached, almost no believers. And we really, I've been prayer walking in their neighborhood, around their temple. They have their own gods, they have their own language, everything. And um, he's like, oh, well, yeah, I think we have two ladies in our church that are from that people. I'm like, no way. <laughs> there's two Christians in this church. And so... Um, anyway, you can go back to the next picture. The, the example picture on the website is the lady in the church. And I was like, wait a second, this is the lady. And so um, anyway, so these, we, uh, this is just a time we got to visit her and kind of shared with her. You kind of have to give the vision that, you know, we're not just focusing on you to make you feel weird. It's like, this is important. You have very few Christians, uh, believers in your uh, people group. And if we look at that Revelation verse, Every t tribe, every tongue, every nation will all be there. J Jesus loves each, every tribe, yeah. and he cares about everyone hearing the gospel and, and he, being, having a chance to know him. And so um, it was a great time. We got to go visit her. She's in her uh, 70s, I think, and she's been a believer for five years. None of her family are Christians. And um, she was kind of discouraged because they're pretty resistant and so we just got to uh, spend some time with her that day and encourage her and pray for her and um, give her some just kind of ideas of how to share just her story with her family. She doesn't have to be a pastor, which that's a big misconception in Thailand is that the pastor is the one who has to share with people and teach people. And so we're, we're doing our best to little by little um, grassroots just teach people. No, every person, every believer, you have a story to share with someone. You have your own testimony and you know what Jesus can do for people. And so um, we appreciate if you all would continue to join us in prayer for people like this, um, this people group, that, which they're local. To, I mean, we can walk to their, their neighborhoods. And, um, and uh, this lady's name is Mother Eid, and she's uh, one of just a few. Uh, I've heard of, I think, I think maybe three or four Christians from the church people I've asked in our area, uh, Christians among 14,000 approximately. And so that's an example where that many people of kind of young believers that don't know who they are in Christ, it's very challenging for them to reach their own people unless they're encouraged, equipped, trained, um, walked with. 
Um, and so, so yeah, those are things that are exciting because we see it's not easy, it's not huge and flashy, but it's for his glory, yeah. that he gets the glory, that people can know the, the, the love of God, that he has made a way for them. He has made a way for them to be righteous. He has given them a free gift already. They just don't know it. He wants his children back. They just don't know. He's looking for them. And, um, you know, people like that, they're, they're lost. They're searching. They're, it's, you know, the Bible talks about blind eyes just like gra grasping. Um, and, you know, that's why they seek after going to the temple and doing these things. Because they know there's a lack. They know they need something. And, but they don't know. In Jesus, he's already done it all. He's already made the way. And so thank you for praying for us. And we encourage you to pray with us for people like that, unreached groups and groups that have very few believers or zero. Um, and uh, so you can jump back to that other slide. And um, this is uh, the previous. And I'll wrap it up here. We can get to the baptisms. That's the exciting moment. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, this is we're still connected in Nepal, and it was fun to be able to be there with Milena a little bit this past year, and also connect with our, our brothers and sisters there. Um, Nepal is another place. We have people here who've lived there. Uh, another place has many unreached groups and villages. And um, we've got uh, on the top right, we're our good friend, pastor, our partner when we lived there, and still um, he's the one who had, who had been in jail for sharing the gospel, and still he's a one-year prison sentence. He still is facing having to serve just for sharing the gospel in a place that has zero Christians in the mountains. And um, so the amazing thing and encouragement he is to us is we watch him. He's not hiding. He's not crying and moping. He's expanding his church. He's preaching the gospel more. He's doing Bible schools all in a nation that is restricting Christian activity. Um, and so he's a huge blessing in our life just as an encouragement to us. And um, some of these young guys here um, on this left, uh, he's the, the first believer from his entire region. We got just the privilege to lead to Jesus um, through miraculous ways, actually. He was completely healed miraculously. Um, and um, his father's a witch doctor. I've told the story here before. His, daughter, his father's the local witch doctor that had oppression and, and demonic activity in their family his whole life. And he had physical and emotional and mental problems. And he met Jesus. Everything turned around. He was completely healed. Um, completely healed, completely set free of crippling depression. And realized, wow, my dad is supposed to be the, the healer of this village. He could, my life got worse and worse and worse. Um, but Jesus set me free. And so he's a, he's a powerful witness now. He's, he knows the Bible better than many people I know, including myself. He just reads constantly, prays all the time. He's an awesome young guy. And um, people like that, where it's these little, little seeds over time, you never know what's going to develop and what's going to grow. Um, but the Holy Spirit is working. You can skip ahead. And um, I just want to close it out on this, just a simple story. But this was also in Nepal this past year, um, one of the times. At, in the evening, I was walking on the street where we used to live and um, saw these uh, street boys sitting there. It was very cold that night. The little guy, no shoes, no food. Um, the older guy, a teenager, I was like, hey, I, I know you. We, and we used to, when he was little, we used to give him food. We used to give him shoes. We used to share the gospel with him. We used to invite him into our prayer house and um, do worship you know, with the street kids and things. And um, he's still out there because he has no paperwork or anything to get a job. But um, he's doing good. He's off drugs. He, um, I asked him if he's following Jesus. He said, yeah, I believe I, I, I follow Jesus. And he's not doing drugs anymore. And he actually is taking care of the little guy and helping him. And um, so it, was a, it was a blessing to me to see that. Because over the years, you never know. And I, I just want this to be an ending encouragement for everyone. You never know the little things that you do to show the love of God. And, um, but if you do that, if you step out and if you're faithful, just to let his love overflow yeah. and share it with other people and, and speak the truth to them and care for them. Um, just in the simple moments, it will have an impact. Yes. It's not a, it could, but it will actually. It will at some point because that is a powerful seed in their life. And um, even these young guys, 
And so, you know, I got the privilege to buy this kid some shoes, give him some dinner, and uh, share the gospel with them again, uh, pray for both of them, and just encourage the older kid that keep going, keep, keep, keep going, stand strong, and that he is demonstrating Jesus to his friend, and just to encourage him to that, you know, and it really actually blessed me. I was like, wow, he, I mean, I can see Jesus in this kid, how he's walking and caring for someone else like that. And um, so I just wanted that little story, just wanted to encourage all of you, don't, don't stop doing those little things because they will have impact. Uh, when you're doing it with the Holy Spirit in your life and the love of God flowing through you, it is having an impact in your life. Um, and then baptizing them all, teaching them everything He commanded you and, because He is with us to the end of the age. Um, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And like Clint said earlier, all glory to Jesus, you know? And there's a lot of moments where it doesn't feel like there's any glory, that's for sure. That's <laughs> very, very frustrating. But eyes on Jesus, like I love you saying that this morning. We say that all the time. Okay. Eyes on Jesus, not on all the stuff, not on the lack, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Eyes on Jesus, you know? Right. And, um, and I mean lack of fruit, that kind of thing. Um, in Him, there's no lack. He's my yes. shepherd. Yeah. And um, so, um, anyway, just want to thank you all again yeah. because so many of you, including the church itself, um, gives to us regularly to enable us to be there because we can't, we can't be there having a job. It's not, it's, we can't do that. We're there. We're there um, as ministers, and um, so many of you, including the church itself, and many online, thank you so much, our Canadian friends and all over the place, um, uh, giving so that we can be there to do this, and we all share in the fruit together, and we're all giving glory to Jesus together. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good, so good. We love you guys. <clears throat> we want to pray for y'all. Let's maybe just the family just line up right in front right here. And uh, you guys, the parents, and step step a little bit in front so people can get around behind you as well. If you have a heart for the Kretsus or if you have a heart for missions and you would just like to participate, step forward just a little bit so people can get behind you as well. We just want to pray for them. So Barb and Bill, y'all come on up. And like I said, if you have a heart for missions, Make your way up here and just get a space where you can pray for them as you're coming up. Let me just put this slide up here. This is These are all the ways to give. If you go to forward.church slash give, there is a drop down in the fund area for the Kretsu family. If you can't give today, maybe start next month and, you know, just just throw a little bit in there and... and um, all of it goes to them. You can also give through the other channels and put their name in there to give toward them. So it's a, it's a worthy effort. Do you appreciate this family? Yeah. I'm going to ask Bill to pray. This is Cassidy's dad. Why don't you slide around to the front up here and we'll just hand you the microphone. You can pray over them, the father. All right, let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we do thank you so much for the blessing of, uh, of this family, and I just uh, pray, God, that you would uh, continue to bless and provide for all their needs, Lord, that you would go before them. Your Holy Spirit would just uh, light their path, God, whatever they do, whatever they say, and wherever they go, that, God, you would continue to do that. We thank you so much for them, and I I thank you for Josh being such a great leader in his family. I thank you for Cassidy for for her love and her her spirit of excitement and uh, and the blessing that she is to her kids and and uh, Lord, I just pray that that whatever they need, God, that you would provide for them. And we thank you so much for that. Thank you for this church and uh, the blessing that they have as a uh, they're under that umbrella of 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 your. Uh, spirit-filled people, God, I thank you so much for that.
I just pray that you'd give them uh, uh, and encourage them, Lord, in, in everything that they do as a church body. And I thank you for what they're doing in, in uh, this family. And I just pray, God, they continue to be able to uh, uh, bless them the way they do. And I thank you so much for that, God. And uh, again, we just pray a blessing on them. Lord, you would go before them. We thank you so much. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into his kingdom. He's done everything to provide eternal life for you, and you only receive it by grace through faith. And we want to help you be sure in your salvation. You know, maybe you're new to Christianity. Maybe you're discovering things about God for the first time in your life, and you don't really know what it's all about. I've been there, trust me. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't know anything about God when I got born again and tried to approach the Bible, and it didn't make sense to me. So we want to help you. If you go to forward.church and click on Who is Jesus, we have a simple article on there that explains salvation, everything he did for you, how to begin to read the Bible and start to live a Christian life and incorporate his principles and how to engage the Holy Spirit for empowerment. You know, his grace wants to transform you. His love wants to make you whole. And we want to help you. If you've made the decision to be born again today for the first time, or maybe even a recommitment, and you're just not even sure what to do, how to approach the Bible, reach out to us. Email us at info at forward.church or call our office 770-828-5826. Go to our website, find the article on who is Jesus, and get started. He loves you. He's for you. He will lead you and guide you, and we want to help you. If you'd like to give today, you can give directly at our website, forward.church slash give, or you can text any gift amount to 84321. Thank you so much for your generosity. Would you like to stay connected with us? Then visit forward.church slash connect and click online guest. You'll receive texts and emails with links to free resources and notifications when we're going live on Facebook and YouTube. You are invited to join our Facebook group where you can interact with our pastors and our local and online church members. Visit forward.church and click online community under the ministries tab or go to facebook.com slash group slash forward church. Thanks for watching today. I hope you got something helpful out of this message that you can apply to your life. If you did and you like what you heard, we have hundreds of free resources available online at forward.church or on my blog at clintbyers.com. We also have a church YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. We have SoundCloud, Spotify, you name it, we have it out there. Go like and subscribe to our social media platforms and share those. You know, it's, it's really an opportunity for evangelism to get these materials out online and you can help us. I would ask you to consider supporting Forward Church financially, but then you can also be a great help by going to these social media platforms, follow the accounts, like and subscribe to the videos that will drive up our viewership and we will reach more people together. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We invite you to make the journey. Experience transformation from the heart through our free discipleship resources available at forward.church slash the journey. There you'll find free online courses, recommended reading, and other resources. For tons of free messages and other great resources, go to clintbuyers.com.